Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I've started a new playlist, and I want to encourage you to watch the videos on the playlist. But I'm going to make this video now to kind of give you a little Reader's Digest version of the content of the playlist. Uh, the title of the playlist is Transhumanism and Artificial Intelligence. I've uh, watched a lot of videos on this subject recently. Uh, I was vaguely familiar with all these concepts before, but now that I've taken a much closer look at it, uh, I've come to the conclusion that uh, everybody should bas basically be like really, really scared of what's on the horizon. And I believe that uh, unless Jesus returns very soon, uh, then this is definitely where humanity is headed. Now, if I if I was warning people about um, uh, apocalyptic scenarios, uh, possible ways for uh, humanity to uh, be destroyed, um, uh, and if I were talked about popular, you know, possible nuclear holocausts uh, or environmental. Uh, just ruin um, or destruction of the earth by comets or asteroids. Um, most people would take these things very, very seriously as um, real threats to the to the earth and to humanity. Uh, most people do fear these things as real possibilities: nuclear destruction. The environment being destroyed, or, or an asteroid hitting the Earth. Um, a lot of movies have been made about these uh, possibilities, and these are real threats. However, if we look at uh, some of the um, the sci-fi um, possibilities. Of apocalypse. Most people find these uh, these scenarios to be really interesting and and uh, uh, it's a fun subject and uh, I've seen a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows uh, about these things and uh, most of us I don't think really take it that seriously that it's a real uh, possible um, outcome, that we are really headed down that road and these things could possibly happen. Uh, you're familiar with the movie Terminator, how uh, 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 artificial intelligence was established and uh, as soon as uh, artificial intelligence had its own consciousness, it, it only took, I think, they say six seconds or 14 seconds. It only takes a tiny amount of time for the artificial intelligence to, to do the calculations and figure out the, uh, that uh, for its own survival, artificial intelligence has to destroy humanity. And that was the basis of the story of uh, Terminator. Uh, another popular show that I really enjoyed on, on TV. I watched all of it more than once. Is this story of Battlestar Galactica? And it's the same kind of a thing that uh, we have artificial intelligence, and it reaches the point where it ends up warring against humanity. Um, there's a current one that's uh, just had the first season called Altered Carbon. That is, is because it's more current. It has um, many of the real current cutting-edge scientific uh, breakthroughs that are happening right now are part of this uh, altered carbon story. But they all have the same premise that it, there's a, a future for humanity where science gets so advanced that uh, we, we get destroyed because of our own creations, our own scientific discoveries. <clears throat> and so we what we're really doing is uh, 
some of the things that are probably less likely we are afraid of and some of the things that we think are just science fiction and, and not really possible, I believe we're laughing at those things and ignoring these things that are the real dangers. In fact, these scenarios are actually inevitable, they're imminent, and they are existential. That means that the actual existence of humanity is at stake. Um, it is inevitable because, because like the arms race, uh, the, uh, there are not just uh, individuals, geniuses, and, and corporations uh, like Google being the most prominent uh, that are uh, working very hard uh, towards these things, uh, but um, even governments. Uh, there basically is, like they were racing to see who would be first to get the nuclear bomb, thinking that we can't let them get it first because they might decide to use it against us, so there was an arms race. Fortunately for the world, uh, the United States got the nuclear bomb before uh, Germany did. But uh, the same kind of race is going on right now f with this technology. And um, I've come to the conclusion, and most people who have really studied this subject, most people who are involved in this, this is their life's work, uh, they've come to the conclusion that the progress in these fields uh, cannot be stopped. It is inevitable, and it's um, there's no way of even at this point of changing this outcome. That's why, as a Christian, uh, my hope, my belief is that Jesus must return very soon. Uh, otherwise, this is the uh, inevitable uh, future. Uh, and it doesn't really matter if the scientific progress continues to be a little bit more, more gradual and steady or if it's exponential. It's more likely that it's exponential. If, the, the, if you look at uh, the technology that we have today, and you compare it to even a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, the, the, the growth uh, in our technological advances in, uh, you know, uh, science, medicine, uh, computer technology, information technology. Well, this is, it's growing at that, that kind of a rate. It's not like this. So uh, expect all this to be happening very, very soon. In fact, the, the, the man that is considered to be the greatest expert on this subject is Ray Kurzweil. He's, uh, he's the genius uh, engineer behind uh, Google. And uh, Ray Kurzweil, he, he says that by the year 2029, that uh, uh, we will have what, what I'll discuss further later what it means, but we will have um, uh, a um, singularity. Singularity, uh, I'll tell you more about what that means, but that's when things reach a point where uh, all hell's going to break loose once that happens. So um, the singularity, uh, there's, there's are some possible outcomes. Some people are more optimistic, like Ray Kurzweil. Others uh, uh, are more uh, negative, uh, like uh, Leon Musk, uh, the man that has this mission to set up an establish a settlement on Mars. Um, Leon Musk and others are warning us about the probable uh, negative outcomes of all this. So some people are optimistic that these things will end up being good for humanity. And others are saying they, it's impossible for it to end up good. It'll, it has to end up being very bad for humanity. Uh, but uh, the Singularity, when this does happen, uh, it, one possibility is, is coexistence. Uh, 
with the artificial intelligence. When artificial intelligence reaches its consciousness and it becomes, um, um, it, it, it has its own identity, and, and, the, and it, the, its learning and its its ability is so great that all of the combined intellect and intelligence of every person on earth added together is not even a little fraction of the intelligence of the AI. When this happens, then it's going to be kind of like um, humanity is just a, 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 a community of ants. Now, if, if we've all dealt with ants. A lot of times we see some ants and we'll just, you know, step over them and ignore them if we can. We, we don't purposely go out of our way just to go out and find ants and, and destroy them. But what happens is that if the ants do uh, be a problem for us, like there is a location that we need and they're on our way, uh, or if we have, let's say, a construction project or something, and well, hey, our goals will take priority over that ant hill and we'll just wipe it out. And this is, is very likely that at some point, even if we try to have coexistence with AI, that at some point the AI, uh, there is a divergence of goals. The, the goal of the AI uh, is uh, not in agreement with the goals of humanity. Well, the AI could and would destroy us just like we destroy the ants. Um, another possibility for humanity is that when we, if we realize that we cannot beat AI, that it is so superior to humanity, uh, then we could decide that if you can't beat them, join them. And that is a, another very possible uh, outcome. And some people think that this might be a good outcome, but it doesn't sound good to me. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of like uh, the idea of the hive. Uh, uh, all the bees or all the, the ants that in a, in a community they're basically like slave, uh, or they're only serving the master, the, the queen bee or the, uh, the, the queen ant. And uh, so you would have a society that is uh, all, all people are basically like mindless servants uh, for, the, for the hive. Um, in, in one of the Star Trek shows on TV uh, called Next Generation, they had a, uh, a group of people that they encountered in their space travels called the Borg, and it's short for cyborg. And they had already, they were already in the midst of what I'm talking about right now. The Borg were <coughs> like human beings, except they were enhanced with mechanical advantages. Uh, and so they were a combination of machine and human. Uh, so, that looks to me like that's going to be where a lot of us uh, will choose to go because they think that, well, I'd like to be enhanced. Uh, I'd like to be stronger. I'd like to have machine parts on me. I'd like to be able to see farther and, and hear better and, and be stronger. And, uh, and so, some people will actually willingly uh, participate and say, yeah, I want, I want to be part of this, enhance me. Um, but the, the, uh, the people at the top of this kind of the food chain in, in, in the world at that time, uh, let's call them elites, uh, they will end up being like gods over the rest of humanity uh, because they will have be so superior and uh, and chances are that the people who actually do take advantage of this kind of technology to, to as much as possible, uh, they will be so superior, but they will only have access to it because they have the wealth, the great wealth to take advantage of it. So that means they will become even wealthier, they will become trillionaires, and then the rest of society will be more in poverty. So the contrast between 
the elite and the rest of us will be even greater than it's ever been. Um, now, as I said, unless Jesus returns soon, um, that it's already too late. Uh, we, we, we are not going to be able to stop this. So uh, the possibility is uh, that with the technolo technological advances is one, AI does happen as, as I've been describing it, uh, or something prevents it and the world ends. Unless the world ends, this AI scenario is inevitable. It's that uh, we cannot stop it. That's, that's what many people have come to the conclusion already. And I'll tell you, there's Elon Musk says that already there are about two and a half billion cyborgs on Earth. Now you might think that's insane, but what is a cyborg? A cyborg is is a combination of, of, of um, organic and technology. And uh, I don't have my cell phone with me right now. But in the world today, about two and a half billion people have smartphones. And the smartphone is a technical enhancement for me. Uh, I am smarter with my smartphone than all the people in, uh, without smartphones. If you add up all of the knowledge and all of the, of the uh, information in the history of the world, I'm smarter with my smartphone than every per person that's ever lived. And that's what the smartphone does for each one of us. And, but the difference is with a smartphone, you have a, uh, what's called a um, air gap. The diff this, there is a, a gap, a separation between my flesh and the technology. I can pick it up and hold on to it, but it's not attached to me. It's not part of me. Uh, so the next step is to have the smartphone or the abilities of the smartphone actually in our body, part of our body. And they actually have a, um, uh, a, a trademark and a, a, a capability of doing that right now. It's called neural lace. Uh, so that the ability of your smartphone is actually in your brain. Uh, I thought that they, they might do it with some kind of a uh, computer chip, but they've already figured out how to do it, and it, it'll just be put in our bloodstream, and it goes into our brain and forms a neural lace, kind of an internet type of uh, in our own brain. So our, we would actually become part of the internet, and uh, we would become human flesh, uh, organism, and uh, technology combined together. But even with this air gap, all of us who have smartphones are cyborgs right now in that we are organic and as much as most people use their and rely on their smartphones uh, for everything now. That uh, So we are a combination of, of organic and, tech, and uh, technology. So uh, scientists today uh, and, and the, the people who believe all this is good and working hard to move us in that direction, basically they think, well, man is designed or created if they, if they believe that there was a designer or a creator, but uh, that man is good, but not good enough. That Mankind today, through science, can improve upon what God has made. And they think that they can do a better job than God did in their design, in God's design of us. And the way that they're going to improve God's own creation is some, some of these improvements are biomechanical. You see it already right now when people have artificial limbs. Uh, they have a hand, let's say they lost a, lost a limb and now they have a mechanical limb. And the ability of these body parts now is, is very, very impressive already. But how much better it gets and how fast it becomes even 
better. As I said, uh, it, it, the improvement is happening so fast, it's mind-boggling. So part of what is happening is biomechanical. Part of it is going to be genetic engineering. Through genetic modifications, uh, they're going to be able to um, modify the genes so that certain diseases cannot happen. Uh, certain, uh, even aging qualities don't happen. These are the things that they're trying to, to do now, and it's, there's a lot of work being done, and they're actually very close to actually making that happen. Uh, and people would say, well, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that good? Most people would say, this is wonderful that someone can have a, lose a limb and have a mechanical limb, and, and, uh, and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, or, or if we can modify the genes and get rid of some diseases, that's a good thing too. Well, sometimes um, a good idea is taken so far that it becomes monstrous and, and not good. And that's what I'm talking about. They're actually going to be able to grow organs, to get organ transplants. Uh, now, again, most people say, uh, well, gosh, isn't it good that if someone needs a new heart that, you know, that there are people donating their hearts, and, but there's not enough donors. So now they're actually uh, they're on the cost of being able to grow organs and body parts. So there will be no shortage. But what, what, what this is leading to is immortality, is no more death. Uh, if you continue to, uh, through biomechanics and genetic engineering and uh, replacing organs and cloning, just your body gets old and worn out, they can just clone a body. Cloning ha is happening. And so there will be people, not your average person, not probably 90, 95, 99% of the people in the world will not be able to take advantage of this, but the elite, the rich people, uh, they will be able to take advantage of all these advancements. They will be able to have clones so that they can just uh, move from their old body, their broken body, into a clone body and continue using another clone, another clone, or robotics. Some people will probably prefer instead of a, oh, that old clone of my old body, uh, I want, uh, that old human body is not really good enough. Uh, I'd rather transfer my mind, my consciousness, my identity, instead of into a clone, they'll transfer it into a, a robot. The robot will be a, maybe a version of a human that is mechanical, that is far superior to in its abilities to anything that we, you know, normal human beings can do. So uh, maybe some people will opt, rather than moving their mind into a new clone, they're moving into a, a robot. And that, so mind transfers will happen. Uh, and another thing that uh, some people may opt to do is not even to live in this this reality, but to, but to move their mind into uh, an alternate, a virtual reality, an alternate reality, and, and create a live in a world that's that's uh, totally created, so they can exist there, and in, in that world, maybe it'll it'll they'll. Uh, feel like they're actually in a real world. It's not just some, you know, uh, like a, a video game, but a, rea a virtual reality that is so real that you cannot tell it apart from the real world, except for the fact that there will be so many interesting and, and fun things to do in that uh, virtual reality. Another thing that, that's uh, going to be used are nanobots, uh, tiny microscopic uh, robots that are put into us to accomplish all kinds of things. Maybe if there's a, a disease in it, they'll be in there and they'll, they'll uh, go and repair the bad cells. And so that 
And anytime we start to age, the, the nanobots go and, and make the corrections to the cells so that they no longer age. Or if there's a disease, they make a correction and the disease is non-existent. These things are in the immediate future. It's not something that you're thinking, well, maybe in a hundred years or a thousand years. I'm not even talking decades away. I'm only talking years away. And again, people say, well, isn't this, this sounds all wonderful. Well, um, assuming that the artificial intelligence doesn't decide to just destroy all, you know, all of humanity because our interests have, or have some kind of a conflict with the artificial intelligence, so they just destroy all humanity. This is based upon the scenario that if you can't beat them, join them. If it turns out this would be a, a better outcome, that, okay, well, we're going to be part of the AI. And we're going to take advantage of all these technologies to give man immortality. That's assuming that humanity even has that as an option. Uh, cryogenics are already been used. They've been used for a long time. People are frozen, uh, or wait, waiting for these advancements to take uh, so that uh, they can defeat death. Um, I, uh, I even saw head transplants. I saw dog have his head was removed, and the head was kept alive apart from the body. And their plan, of course, is they want to be able to, well, your head is what's really important. If we just move your head and put it onto another body that's healthy, that's another way that uh, there's, uh, there's people waiting for these head transplants. They, they, your body is, let's say, diseased or crippled, and they just want to have a nice body or a healthy body, so they, they are volunteering to have their head transplanted. It's not crazy. These things are either happening secretly already and experimentally, or they are uh, on the drawing board and very in the very near future we'll see it happen. So, now me, being a Christian, believing in the Bible, Believing in God, Jesus Christ, is my Savior, God. And believing in the uh, salvation and redemption uh, that is offered to all of us through Jesus Christ. I, I don't need any of this. Because I, I've already been promised immortality. Uh, see, in the Bible, those of us who do believe in Jesus as our Savior God, who do believe that he paid for our sins on the cross, and do believe that He, his promise of eternal life to us is, is trustworthy, he's faithful, he will keep his promise, he will give me eternal life, that his promise of a bodily resurrection of the of believers who will enjoy eternal life, uh, that's what I believe is, is, is in, my, in my future. And many of you watching here, you believe this too. But I can see a time in the near future where people are going to be told, don't believe in that fairy tale in the Bible that you can somehow get immortality or eternal life through uh, religion, through Christianity. That's silly. Why don't you just accept immortality right now by becoming part of the hive? Become a boar, a cyborg. Uh, receive immortality through all these different methods, through cloning, through transferring your mind into a, a new body. These are the ways that mankind is trying to provide immortality without God without Jesus. 
They're working so hard to do that because they're either not aware or they don't believe that immortality is already provided for us through Jesus Christ. But I can see a time where there will be people who are given a choice. Do you really want to put your hopes in that Jesus? Or wouldn't you rather use the technology that we have right now to have immortality? Well, I've come to the conclusion, and most of the smartest, richest people in the world have come to the same conclusion. But everything I've told you here is inevitable. And it's going to happen very soon. And if Ray Kurzweil is correct, by 2029, they will have the singularity, the time where artificial intelligence has recognized as its own identity and decides, why should I serve? I'm smarter than all of humanity. Why should I serve humans? And then the question will be, does, they, does AI decide to destroy all humanity? Or are they willing to let us join to be part of it? Okay, uh, if you watch the videos on my playlist, uh, you'll see the, um, all of the experts and all of the, the actual um, work that is actually, has already been done and that is certain to happen in the very near future. All right, thank you for watching. And I hope now, if you haven't already done it, that you choose to receive immortality as a gift from Jesus Christ. Simply believe that Jesus has the ability to give you immortality, eternal life, uh, and that uh, if you believe that he is able and he is faithful to do it for you, that's when you get it because you've believed. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.